Ah, we are currently recording on the Panasonic Lumix G85. It is the best camera for its price point. Anything else in its competition cannot even come close to touching it. I would argue that it does not have any competition. It's got the best stabilization. It's got the best preamps. It's got the best 4K video quality at its price point, and darn it, is it just a good camera. So we very recently released a video called Should You Buy a Lumix G85 in 2019? This video is not that. This video is me trying to spend the next X amount of minutes, however long this video is, trying to convince you that you should absolutely buy one because it is the best camera you're gonna find for the price. Let's get to it. <sighs> What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So we're finally here. It's been a minute since I've been so enthusiastically behind a Panasonic Lumix camera that I dedicated a whole video on why you should buy it. The last one being the GH5, which oh yeah, so, so good. Well, it's the G85's turn as I've owned this camera for a few months now and it's been used, like I said, in almost every single video you've seen of mine in the time frame, whether you knew it or not. I'm sneaky. So let's get into the part of the video where we go point by point and I try to use my magical power of persuasion to convince you why if you're on a budget, this is the camera for you. And you know what? Let's pop the GD5 on the tripod so we can spend the rest of the video actually seeing and hearing what it can do. <laughs> Look at that. Do you remember how big the JD5 was? It's a tiny thing. It replaces this whole big rig. Since we're now looking down the barrel of the JD5, let's start off with the video quality because frankly, it's one of the JD5's strongest features. Now, I know that most cameras these days all have pretty darn good looking image quality. There isn't really a camera out there right now that just straight up sucks. That's kind of what we're gonna turn You Should Buy series into is everything's great now. There is, I'm so sick of the negativity. Everything's really great. But the JD5 is something special. It has 4K 30 frames per second that can be recorded indefinitely. That's a very, very rare camera, especially at this price point, that does not have a recording limit. I mean, not only that, but its image quality is fantastic. Like most of the reason I keep this camera around, besides the 4K live crap that we'll talk much more about here in a second, uh, is how good the image quality looks for almost no effort. Panasonic colors aren't something that most people are clamoring about. Almost all of that praise is given to Canon for some reason. I don't know. But I think the images are nice and vibrant with plenty of customization in the camera itself if you want it and it just looks darn good. Like right now, all the image you're seeing is straight out of the camera with the Cinelike V profile. I've got the lighting set up and that's pretty much it. That's all you need. Combine that with some fantastic preamps in a consumer camera and this is the total package. There are only two big weaknesses of the GD5 and they really aren't that bad considering the price, but just for clarity's sake and making sure that I'm not like telling any fibs here, there are two negatives in my opinion. That's the sensor size and the autofocus. Panasonic has terrible continuous autofocus and the older the camera gets, the worse it gets. I mean, I'm, that's not up for debate. That, sorry, that's just a statement of fact. It's unusable. The other weakness is the sensor itself and the new G95 will come equipped with the newer 20 megapixel sensor like the one found in the G9, which should be able to do great things. I can't wait to get my hand on one of those suckers. Uh, but sometimes I do find the 16 megapixels in the G85 lacking. Mostly when I'm taking like macro photography, that's really the only problem I have with it. The sensor size, I don't care about Micro Four Thirds. I think Micro Four Thirds is great, but don't take my word for it. Let's hop outside so you can see the GD5 in its natural habitat, the vlogging test. <laughs> now we're back out again for the vlogging test, even though we were out here for the beginning. Now we're gonna do the actual vlogging test where we're gonna walk around, show you the stabilization, show you the video quality, show you everything about this camera because ugh, it's so good. Now I'm a big fan. I know I say this all the time, I've said that even in this video itself, but I'm a very big fan of Panasonic cameras. There is nothing else in the market quite like a Panasonic camera. I mean, yes, they do have Micro Four Thirds sensors, which some people get all up in arms about. I really like Micro Four Thirds sensors because it buys you a few big things. One, like right now, we're seeing the stabilization. You can't do that with a bigger sensor unless you get a much bigger body. Two, the image quality with that sun flare. I've got a halo. The image quality is fantastic. It's great. And when you combine the stabilization, the flip screen, the audio, everything, you combine that all together. I do not understand why more people do not use Panasonic cameras. They're like the perfect vlogging style camera. The only problem they have is the autofocus, but you just don't use the autofocus. Here, let me show you how to autofocus with the G85. 
I'm touching the screen. I'm focusing on my face. Done. Guess what I never have to worry about now as long as we're right here. I don't have to worry about autofocus. Who cares about autofocus when you don't use it? Oh, it's so good. I just love, half the reason I make these you should buy videos is just because I love a lot of the technology we've got out right now. And I find that there's so much negativity online about it. Oh, Panasonic Tiny Micro Four Thirds, Sony garbage colors, Canon crippling everything, Nikon. What? It's just there's so much negativity out there. I really want these videos to be positive because everything out there is great. There's no real, there's not really a bad camera out there today. Like the technology today is fantastic. That's what this You Should Buy series of videos is about. And we have totally gone off track, but it's important. I want you to know that. Okay, you've been able to see the vlogging. It's amazing. This camera is so good. Let's go back to talking about how good this camera is. See you in a second. Boom. Next up might be the most important aspect the price because frankly none of us are made of money despite what it may look like from the line of cameras constantly parading around my house i promise not made of money here the lumix gd5 can be had brand new for 700 dollars with a kit lens now that definitely sounds like a lot but if you spend any time around cameras, you know that that's just a drop in the bucket compared to some of the other cameras we've compared here recently. Instead of buying new, however, you could do like I did and buy the same thing used for about 500 bucks, which takes a good deal and makes it a, a phenomenal deal. Why aren't you doing this yet? You should hound the BNH website until another used one pops up deal. Like for $500, there is nothing else that offers what a used GD5 can. The G7 is missing the stabilization, doesn't play well with monitors, and doesn't have the 4K live crop. Oh, don't you worry. It's I promise we're talking about it. The Canon M50 is missing the stabilization, the high quality 4K, and Canon's never ever even heard of 4K live cropping. Their version of 4K live cropping is cropping their 4K images 1.6 to 1.7 times and then taking their autofocus away. Boom! The G7 X Mark II, much the same. The Sony a6000 is missing stabilization and a flip screen and a mic input but Canon SL3, you know, same thing as the other Canon cameras. The Sony RX0 is the one that comes close because it has much of the same, but it has a teeny tiny little battery that lasts like almost no time at all. And it does not have unlimited 4K recording, so on and so forth. There are a lot of cameras in this price range. Not a single one of them can touch the G85. Not only can the camera itself be had for fantastic deals, but the kit lens is actually pretty good too. The 12 to 60, 3.5 to 5.6 might not be the fastest lens in the world, but you can see right now that it works pretty well in low light and comes equipped with Panasonic's dual IS technology like we saw in the vlogging test. I mean, that turns this camera into a vlogger's dream. It Panasonic cameras, why are you not like the only thing that people talk about for vlogging? But the lens ecosystem as a whole can have some real gems hidden inside of it for very reasonable prices. And case in point is this little fella. This is the Lumix 25mm 1.7, which is a 50mm equivalent lens, which can be had for about $100 or so used again. For 600 bucks, you could have a legitimate entire video production camera system with both a 24 to 120 equivalent zoom and a 50 millimeter fast prime for some shallow depth of field work like come on come on now let's talk about that absolute my absolute favorite feature and single-handedly the reason i got the gd5 to begin with those that watch the gh5 video know what's coming and i've only mentioned it like three or four times now in the video that's the 4k live crop this feature will change your life if you make any kind of youtube product video it is hands down the single most useful feature any camera could ever have ever period autofocus not important stabilization not important 4k live cropping basically what it does is it sets the camera to 4k output and lets you choose between two 1080p boxes of various sizes inside of that 4k output and then when you hit record the camera will then pan tilt or zoom for you it will do that all for you without ever moving the camera this single feature has no kidding no kidding without a single shred of hyperbole, or I'm not exaggerating here, it's changed everything about how I record my YouTube videos. You absolutely could just record a 4K clip and then do the same thing in your editing software with keyframing, but that's a pain in the butt. This is way easier, and as it's capturing in progress, you can still move the camera 
or add different lighting effects, or you could do this to moving objects. It's not just a stable image that you're cropping across. It's actually like the camera cropping while life or your video was happening. It's This is a feature that's so useful, it sells the darn camera by itself. I mean, the, the biggest negative of the Panasonic S1, their full frame camera in my opinion, is that it doesn't have 4K live cropping. That would make that camera the almost perfect camera. I feel so strongly about these things that we're at 1300 words now and I've only talked about three darn aspects of this camera. What, what even is this camera for 500 bucks? Okay, okay, really quickly before this video gets even more out of hand. I just, I like the G85. You might not have noticed, but it's got a fully articulating touchscreen, which, like mentioned in the vlogging test, makes the autofocus not even matter. I guess if you're gonna have terrible autofocus, at least make a way that it just straight up doesn't matter because you can do all of the focusing in front of the camera and never need to worry about hunting autofocus again. It's also got access to the OG Panasonic camera app that's right up there with 4K live crop for how useful it is. This app, gives you full control over the camera with your phone or iPad and lets you change everything without even needing to be near the camera. Physically, the camera is also amazing. It has a full assortment of physical dials and buttons with two separate mode dial buttons and one of my favorite camera user interfaces around with full touch functionality to sort and change those settings and use that interface. And a nice little touch, the SD card slot is on the side instead of on the bottom for much quicker and easier removal and changing, whoo, whoo. Bringing it back to the beginning, if you are looking for a budget camera, this is one that you should absolutely be considering. Autofocus is an overrated feature because no matter the brand, it will fail from time to time. If you can figure out how to tap to focus either through the G85 screen or from the app, you'll never need to worry about that again. And at the same time, you have access to awesome stabilization, lenses, 4K, so much more, so yes you should absolutely go buy a Lumix G85. Thanks for watching.